Greetings and welcome to a, another tutorial by me, one of few. I'll start off by saying that this is this tutorial will show you how to take a, a 2D character head into After Effects, rotate it so that it sort of looks 3D, and then and then I'm going to show you how to take that and then make make it easier to edit and easier to use on a full body character rig. Um, one, I'll have a link in the description to another tutorial I saw that just basically the principles of the 2D, 3D head turn, which is a good watch. It goes into more detail than I probably will. And that video is by Ross Plaskow. So you should definitely check that out if you just want to make a 2D, learn how to make a good 2D uh, head turn. But I'm going to kind of sort of speed through some of that and, and take it one step farther into showing you how you can make it more of a rig for a full body character, make it a little bit more editable. So let's start. Uh, I'm starting off in Illustrator, and here you can see that uh, I've just got all my layers on separate, or all my elements on separate layers, the head, the hair, the bangs, the eyes, the brows, the nose, the mouth, all that good stuff, all on different layers. It's just going to make it easier to move them around so I go into After Effects, comp open it up in using Composition Retain Layer Sizes, and then I'll make sure that all my stuff will be the same as I had it in Illustrator. Everything will be named the same and sized the same. So here I am uh, making my comp. I'm going to make it 24 frames a second. I wanted just a, an even number for, for my frames. Uh, I didn't want to work with 29.97 because I'm going to be using a lot of time remap in this. So I didn't want anything to get wonky with the uneven number. So basically, I, I create that comp, and then I dread, and I bring in my, uh, my head comp. This has all the elements from Illustrator inside of it, pre-comped. So I size that down so it fits in the scene, and then I dive into the head comp, and there's all my elements, just as they were. I turn the background white so that you can just see it a little bit better. Make sure the frame rate's the same as the other comp, which is 24. And then I bring this uh, comp to down to four seconds. I start out with five and realize that was wrong. I end up making it four seconds just because it has a nice beginning, middle, and end, zero, two, and four. And that will that sort of three three spot. Uh, uh, philosophy is used a lot in this head turn. So I create shapes from all my uh, vector layers and get those out of the way and hide them. So now I have editable shape layers that all look exactly the same as my Illustrator files, which is a very useful thing. I use, in that, I use that in After Effects all the time. And then I end up starting with the eyes, just because I, for me I felt that would be the easiest element to shift left and right first to sort of set the precedent for all the ones to follow and just make it a little bit easier for myself. So I put keyframes on the size and scale of both the pupil shapes and I go all, I set those keyframes this everything since everything is centered the way I created the art I set the keyframe, the center keyframes at two seconds, then I go back to the beginning of the timeline and I shift the eyes over to the left. That's the start of my turn. And so now at two seconds you see it shifts back to the center and then I'm going to go to the end of the keyframe and or the end of the timeline and do the opposite. So I'm going to move both the pupils over to the right. There you go. Looks very weird because nothing else is moving with it, but that's kind of how it goes. Once you get all the pieces moving together, it really starts to sell the effect. You can see you want those eyes to sort of thin out a little bit, get closer together once you go to the left and right. You want to move them up and down slightly because this just sells the 3D effect a little bit more. The outside eye will drop down a little bit if it's the face is round. And so here I speed through and I basically do the exact same principle with all the other elements. So brows, nose, and I just tweak rotation scales on different things. Just whatever that element needs to look right, I'll do. So the mouth, I did a little bit of rotation. The double chin line, I did a little bit of rotation and 
position to. The the head was probably the most complex thing. I actually changed the path of the head to make it to sell that turn. The ears were scales. The rosy cheeks were just a position and rotation. Just following the eyes, really following that same guideline that the eyes were making. So as you can see, it's already starting to come together. I haven't even done everything yet. I adjust the shadow of the eyes. I think I move on to the bangs next. The bangs were sort of like the face. I had to adjust the actual path of the shape. I actually end up adding another piece of hair there just because she looked too bald when she was looking off to the left. And then I go back in and tweak the face just because the cheeks really shouldn't be there on the outside of the turn, so I soften the, that edge. I'll do the hair. I did a little rotation and position on the hair. And there you have it. That's pretty much, and then I start to preview it, and that's pretty much your full turn. You have a, a full turn to the left and to the right. Which is pretty cool. Already looks pretty cool to me. And that was not much work to sort of get it to that position. Just a little bit of moving elements left and right and positioning them a little bit. So now we go back to our, what I'll call our character comp. And this is where your whole character would live. So you just have the head comp right here. I put a time remap on that because that's how I'm going to be able to control it more easily in the character comp. I'll be able to rotate the head exactly how I want to. So I add a slider control to the head head comp. And slider control, if you drop down the slider, it actually goes from 1 to 100. So I pick whip my time remap to the slider control, and then I divide, and at the end I just hit divide by 25 because my head comp's four seconds long and the slider goes to 100, so 25 goes into 100 four times. I actually ended up having to increase it to 26 just because the head was disappearing at the very, very end, and it was bugging me, so that, sort, that seemed to fix it. So now as you see, as I move the slider to the right, she looks right, move to left, she moves left. I can now keyframe this slider and make her move as quickly or as slowly as I want her to turn her head. I have full control over the speed and I can also ease in and ease out of head turns which is very nice. Makes it just look a little bit smoother. See how I put a little ease on the end and then she turns a little bit smoother. And that to me is looking pretty pretty darn cool if you ask me. And then here I just, I, I go back in here and I just tweak things a little bit. I sort of parent everything to the head. I parent everything to the head just so that I can add a little bit of a rotation on the, the head turn, which once again, just sort of selling that. See, I'll make her turn slightly up, chin up towards the direction she's turning. It just sells the the head turn, the 3D, just a little bit more. If you watch Ross's video, he goes a lot into those little subtle things you can do to really make that make that head turn look nice. So at this point, as I'm playing with my head and having all sorts of fun, I'm realizing that, oh, if I use this in a full character rig, because the head is on a time remap, I actually have no control over the eyes right now or the brows. I can't move them up and down or make them blink. And that's a big problem for me because I like to make my characters blink randomly and, and put some emotion in their eyebrows. You get a lot of emotion out of that stuff. So I am going to do come up with a way to solve for this might not be the best way, but it's the way I came up with yesterday as I was working on it. Here I'm still just RAM previewing just for the hell of it as I'm sitting here thinking, oh, I can't make these eyes blink. What am I going to do? But have no fear. I actually come up with a sort of a workaround. So here I am later. I've duped my head comp. 
both in the project and in my timeline. And I actually create, uh, in my second head comp that I've created, I call it eyes. I label it eyes, and then I go in and I just make everything invisible but the eyes, as you can see here. All the same things are there, but I've just had the eyes selected. So the head turn, all the head, all the turning is still there that we had before, all the work we did. I'm just going in and uh, cropping down the comp so it's easier to work with and, and hold because I'm going to be scaling these eyes to make them blink, so I wanted it to sort of be as centered and small as possible. And so once we go back, the eyes are a little off place, but I readjust them, and you can see the turn is still working exactly how it is. And in the head comp, I turned off the other eyes, so there's no du duplicate eyes. And I parent my eyes to the head, so now I have free reign to move things around, back and forth. No problems. So what this does, as I'll show you in a moment, is that now I can take the scale of the eye layer and I can uh, keyframe the vertical of the scale and do a little blink. And you'll see how that works in a second. This would have been un impossible to do if the eyes still lived in the head comp because it's time remapped. The turn is the turn is the turn. You can't you can't make the eyes blink whenever you want to when they're s when they're set to this turn. So breaking them out of the time remap and then scaling them outside in here gives us the ability to do put blinks wherever we want to. As you can see, the eyes are acting wonky right there, and that's because I haven't deleted the the keyframes to their slider control. They're still on the they still have the same keyframes that the previous that the head comp did because I just duped it. So basically I just delete all the slider keyframes and then I pick whip the eye slider to the head slider, which is where the keyframes live for the turn. So now if I turn the head any way, the eyes will go with it. Their slider will animate just like the head does. And then I dupe make another comp and make it the, just the back hair. So what this does is it gives me the ability to put a body in between the head and the hair, which I'm showing right now. I make a makeshift little body. And then also the hair slider is parented to the head slider. So now whenever the head does a turn, the eyes and hair will move together. And then I can parent the head to the body. And then now my head, my body, when my body rotates, my head will rotate with it along with everything else. And this is me just sort of testing it and seeing what I can do. Uh, and then I end up breaking out one more thing, which is the eyebrows. I did it the exact same way as the eyes, duped the head layer, and then um, just make the, the eyebrows visible. And here I was trying to use a mask, but I ended up actually having to make two. I actually had to dupe the head comp twice one for the left eyebrow and one for the right eyebrow. This just made it easier for me to position and rotate each one individually, which wouldn't be too different from how I do brows normally now. So as you can see, like I can make the eyebrows go up when she's looking to the e either direction. Free, totally free reign to make the eyebrows move wherever I want them to at any point, but they'll still turn and morph with the head turn just as they should, because everything is still parented to the head slider turning. So now I just go in and add some arms just to, just for fun, just to build out the character a little bit more. Uh, if I was doing a full-blown character, I'd probably have a Duick rig that had the full body and everything would be uh, all rigged up for animation. But for these purposes, I just wanted to see it really quick. 
And if you were doing that, you could you could pre comp the brows, the he- and the the eyes and the head, and just make one head. If you wanted a little bit less clutter. So here's me testing out the rig at the very end. As you can see, let me turn off my motion blur. I still have full control over the head, no matter what position of the animation I'm at. You know, I can turn and the hair goes, the eyebrows go, and the eyes go. Just off that one slider, I can control the whole head turn. So that's basically it. Um, I've yet to really take it farther and take it into a full character Duick rig. That'll, that might be my next project. I might release a tutorial. I just wanted to make something so if someone found themselves in the same position I was and wanted to see how you could sort of take that head turn and make it a little bit more rig friendly, uh, that they'd be able to find this and sort of see that. So I hope it was helpful, and uh, we'll see you next time.